Hey, so I'm just going to show you how to connect this sequence of blocks up in the nano pack. I'm going to add a sequence of block here to the to the rack. Note sequencer and a synth. Connect that to the output. Going to connect the pitch output of the sequence, so the pitch input of the synth, and then the gate connects up here to the gate input. Um, and then we can just set some pitches. I'm going to set some things randomly here, just to create a cool, interesting sequence. And then we can drive the position of the sequencer using this position port. There's no internal clock or any way of driving the sequencer um, of the block itself. It has to be driven from its position port. We can drive uh, this position port using any kind of um, oscillator or um, any kind of modulation control signal or anything. But we can just use a, uh, a fader just to kind of see how that works. So add a fader like this. And then I'm going to also smooth that using a smoother block. So it's not too jagged when I move it with a mouse. You notice that when I'm going forwards in time using the fader, it's it's a bit smoother and when I go backwards it kind of jumps in a strange place. That's because the beginning of the note, the note sort of starts at the beginning of the step and then ends halfway through the step and the next note starts at the beginning of the next step and then and it stops halfway through. Um, so what we need to do is set the length of the note longer than, than it currently is, which is 50% of the length of the, of the step. We can do that just using this length port here. It's going to duplicate this block, this fade block, and then connect it here to set the uh, the length of the step to, to the entire length of the gate signal to be the entire step like this. I'm just gonna set it just below one. Now if I go forwards and backwards, basically all the notes are gonna fill up the whole sequence. And you can go play it forwards and backwards like that. Okay, so um, normally you would play sequences, if you wanted to play the sequence sort of uh, using like a, a regular timing, you'd connect up a, a sort of kind of continuous ramp signal to this position port here. So there's a block for that called ramps. So let's use that. Oops. And we can connect that up here. Let's delete these. That's, that's pretty regular. And you can set the t speed of the ramp using this knob here. If you go this way on the control, it actually it'll be free running and you can go as fast as you want. And then to the right hand side, it's going to be synchronized to the host here and bars and beats and things. Set it to one bar. So um, currently, as you can see, the ramp signal is just kind of going up steadily from zero up to one, which is driving the position of the sequencer. But I can add a shaper block. Uh, like the block here has six different shapers. I add a scope. And sort of see what these shapers do. And we'll do something slightly different. Let's connect these up to the position port. That's hyperbolic. This one's parabolic. That kind of speeds up. Sine wave. It's going to go forwards and backwards smoothly. And this one's tan H. Slows down and exponential will do something similar but a bit faster. So instead of the shaper block, we've also got a, a dedicated position effects block, which is good for kind of modifying this position signal in different ways using these controls. You have some different you have different modes for modifying it. So you can see 
if I change the modes, you'll get different kind of effects. Let's have a listen to that. That speeds it up. Uh, this control smoothly morphs between each mode. And then you can also click on the label underneath the control to step through them. This one's jitter. It's kind of jitters it gives it a sort of a slightly irregular timing. This one's random. So sort of take random steps. So you can see it's randomly choosing different steps. And you've got a pattern which kind of just reorganizes the steps in the sequence, as you can see, by a set pattern. And you can select the pattern using the depth control. You've got a bunch of different patterns to choose from. We can actually modulate this depth control using a LFO. Let's find an LFO. We connect that up here. It's quite fast. Let's set that to maybe once every two bars. Oops. And then maybe it's like a random step, so we can randomly step through the different patterns using the LFO now. Every two bars, it's going to it's going to randomly select a different pattern. Okay. Well, I hope that's been useful.